Hello and back again to another episode about Driven by Moss for Reaper. So far there was no possibility to also use a session view, so use clips and scenes was not possibility yet and also sequences were not available with all of the different devices. So for example like a launchpad control, the Ableton Push 1 and 2, the APC Mark 1 and 2 and also the APC Mini. They could only use the mixing features and the transport ones but not the specific clip startings and scenes because simply Reaper has no such uh, features. In this video I'm going to show you how I implemented that. I already started up Reaper, it's empty, no tracks and you also see here the push which uh, doesn't show anything because it's empty so let's create a new track. To do so you can simply press on add track then you have the option to load one of your templates or you can press shift and add track you get a completely empty track and we want to add a device with it or before that maybe let's give it a nicer color so press the select button you can here press select the color and we want to have that track in blue and now we can add a device you press uh, add device and you also get here browser and you have different filter options for example we have already here the selection to only show VSTs this is fine with us so with VST or let's take we want to have an instrument so let's take a VST TI and let's say we want to start with some drums so we pick here the native instruments battery press browse again and we have that device loaded you see that if you go to device you see okay battery is already coming up here and you can also press the window button so you will see batteries window here we can load something and now it's getting interesting we want to use a sequencer so let's go back here to the mix view and let's say we want to to press no twice you can choose what you want to do you can simply play have a piano view all these things let's start with a drum uh, sequencer and to have a drum sequencer we need a clip first so let's say we want to create a, or let's first close that window here let's say we want to have a new clip on this track and if you press a new button the clip is to create it where the current play cursor position is so it's here in the beginning so we start at the beginning you can now record into that but i see i made a mistake the first thing i need to do is i don't want to record audio i want to record all midi input here and you also need to make sure you have it record enabled okay we have that and we want to also hear what we do so if we press select again you can check that we also want to enable here the monitor so now okay that looks much better and also make sure that you have MIDI overdub enabled which is hidden here so we have MIDI 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 no here we have record midi overdub yeah it's correct so let's delete that again it's always a bit tricky with reaper to have all the correct settings so what you need to ensure is to record enable it to have the midi input and also to have the monitoring on and now we can finally do it again press the new button and you see you can now play and record something completely meaningless into there but what you could also do you don't even have to have record enabled let's simply undo that let's have an empty clip but you need to have the clip selected then you can also use the sequencer so let's start with a bass drum fall on the floor add some some snare here you can also combine it you can say okay i want to record you can do it like that or use the sequencer again Also touch sensitive, so be careful with that. Yep. 
Yeah, we have a beat going. So what's now interesting, when you switch into session view, what's happening? So we see this track is record enabled. You can also uh, turn that off, like doing it like from here or press that one and that one, you can turn it off. So you see only the clip. You see it's also in the color of the track and you can press it just to start it. You should be able. Ah, okay, let's first stop recording so we can use the clip. You see when I press it, uh, the playback is started from the clip's beginning. What is the idea here with clips? So all the media items you have on your track are treated as a clip. So if you have multiples, let's do it like this. So you see we have now three clips. And what is what you need to know? Clips are just displayed as they are on the track. So it doesn't matter how long they are or at what position. It's just one clip. So let's do it like that, not like that. Let's let's make that one shorter that move that one here and move that one here so you see it's still the three clips and when I select them you see the playback is started from the beginning of the clip and no loop is is applied to them let's go back to here so you can play with them as you like you might now wonder what happens if you have multiple tracks. It is like this. Let's add another track. Let's say here we want to have an FM8. Let's give that also a nicer color in red to have the bass. And we want to have that window here. Pop it up and we can look for a bass sound. Let's pick a bass sound and we can also go here to the play view. So we could play the bass. So we could now simply play a bass thing, but we want to show up the sequences. So let's take now, I really like this raindrop sequences. So let's try that one. We need to have a clip for that as well. So let's do here a new clip. We don't need recording because we deal with the sequences. Back to raindrop. And now it's really the fun starts. Let's just sub it up. So you always get very nice beats if you just don't know what you're doing. Let's do it like that. <laughs> really nice. So also this raindrop sequencer works as you see. And go to the clip. You see here also there is this single clip and if you duplicate it it's also there. So if you want to have that it makes any sense, you should have your clips of the same size and at the same positions. You can also do it like this. So you see it's still at the same, nothing changes here. And you also don't get any space. So if I would move that one here, it's not the third one. It's just counted from a start and just displayed, which is pretty simple to understand and practical, I think. So you see, if I select the second one, it starts the second clip. So for example, you can have here, like the, in the beginning, you can have the loop running and improvise with the other clips. So, but to have that with more fun, you want to have some scenes. So you have the, the clips running in loops and also have different parts of a song, for example. So how can you do scenes here? So I thought, why not do scenes with regions? So what you can do is you can select any number of clips you have and you say, okay, I want to create a region. This is create region from selection here and you can give it a name. So let's say this is our, ooh, intro to the song give it a name intro and it's okay so can set a color to it if you want to so let's make this scene Ooh, difficult choice let's make it in a very horrible one like pink okay create a second region as well and we name that one this could be our verse for example and also give it a different color so we can also see that and oh Okay, we are done with these two. You see here also on the push, there appeared now two scenes. And what you can do is start the first one. It also gets looped automatically. And you can start the second scene as well. 
So there is no feature to keep that in sync, but if you're a little bit good at pressing the knobs at the right time, you can do that. You see, you can switch it, so switching is very fast. And you can do quite easily switch between your different parts of a song, like you do with Bitwig or in Ableton as well. You can do now in Reaper. And also there is this new view here. If you press session again, you see you have the option to flip. You can flip the session so you see it horizontally. So now it aligns more to what you see in the arrangement of Reaper. And you have also the option to say you want to see only the scenes. So now the knobs, uh, the pads here turn into the scenes. These are also the colors we selected. So the pink one and the green one. And you can also play here the scenes like like this and you can also show that in the display if you say okay I want to see clips up here so you see here also your scenes and the names and if you switch back here to the session view you see also the names of the clips but we don't gave them any names so we can give the item here a name if you go to properties you can name uh, your take so let's say this is our drum intro and you see the name appears here it's now saying drum intro so we also get an idea what is on your pads and you have the name there so I think that's it. You see, you have all the sequences here. The drum things are working now as well. And you can use clips and have scenes. Uh, maybe I can also show the markers. So you can use markers anywhere in your project. For example, we can say here, let's put a marker here. Call it my marker. Bam. And it's here. And you can also set a color for it if you want to do that. You can say, let's make that one in that brownish color. And you have that also here. And you can say, okay, let's jump to here. And you can have also here the option if you want just to select it or if you want to launch it. So let's stop it. Let's go to the marker. It goes to the marker. Switch to launch and go. Then you can also have it to start like you have with the clips. But it can be anywhere. It doesn't have to be at the beginning of a clip. So I hope you enjoyed that one and saw how powerful it is now to use this Driven by Moss for a Reaper extension with Reaper. Have fun and make some funky music. <laughs>